made a 63% return in cardboard since 2018. Well, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie and today we're going to talk about uh, investing in Magic the Gathering particularly. Uh, we're going to kind of ask this question that I'm going to title the video, Should You Invest in Magic the Gathering Today? Uh, and first off, I want to get this right off the bat. This is not financial advice. I am not somebody that you should look to for investment on, on your know, conversation or, or whatever, but I am an average everyday human who happens to, to own a local game store. So those are my biases. Um, I'm not going to try to sell you anything. And in fact, I'm going to walk away with this video telling you that investing in Magic the Gathering is kind of a, a, a bad decision. Um, but I wanted to get that stuff out of the way up front and have this conversation conversation of should you invest in Magic the Gathering. Now, um, I the, to give you some some framework for this conversation, I started watching Magic the Gathering videos in uh, 2017, 2018. I had taken a break, a hiatus from playing the game as I got married. I started some jobs and I uh, started, you know, doing my adult life. And I just, you know, started working out because I was getting fat. <laughs> and um, I started working out. And as I was working out, I found Rudy from Alpha Investments on YouTube. And I just started watching box openings and started thinking about this idea of collecting sealed products. So that was 2018 when I first bought my first booster box of Magic the Gathering uh, to keep sealed as a sealed investment. And that was, a, I believe, a Dominaria uh, booster box. So uh, I kind of calculated out the math of what I have made as a result of uh, investing since 2018 and, you know, the purchases I made in 2018 I calculated out based on the expected return today in 2023. It has been five years since I started this kind of adventure in collecting or investing in sealed product. And I will say first off to the comment section who says, well, you should have put this money in a Roth IRA or you know whatever the, the different things are. Yeah, I do all that we do. Uh, you know, at, at the time when I was working for somebody else, we had employee match compensation for uh, retirement funds and we did all that stuff. Uh, and then we did the Roth IRA bit and um, I, all this stuff happens after that, right? This was money that I took and I invested instead of putting fun money uh, into hobbies or, um, you know, instead of drinking and smoking and spending my money on silly things, I put it in sealed magic product. I could have put that money in the stock market. I could have put that money in uh, crypto. I could have put that money in a lot of different things, but I chose to put that money in sealed magic product. And that is um, the, the conversation here. Should you take your fun money uh, and invest it in something like sealed magic product um and so from 2018 to now what i've seen is a 63 percent i'll pop it up on the screen a 63 percent increase in value from what i purchased in the 90 to 100 dollar range for draft boxes at the time of standard products um all the way up to like battle bond came out it was a supplemental product. My, my cost basis was like $90 to $100 there. Uh, and as well as the master set in Masters 25th, as well as Ultimate Masters. If you take those seven releases and you calculate it out, the average um, you know, percentage gain of those products was 63%. Uh, and this is something that not everybody talks about. You know, 63% over five years is 13%. That is an awesome rate of return. That is a really good, you know, above the S&P 500. It's, a, it's kind of a, a really good, it's slightly above the S&P 500, not really that much, but it's a pretty good return on investment. And then additionally, you have the joy factor of collecting sealed product. You get to put something on your shelf. This is a, a Mirrodin booster box that we're gonna open at 10,000 subs. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit like so that we can finally open. And I think we're gonna draft this Mirrodin booster box. It's gonna be a lot of fun. But it's something that you have tangible joy with. It's something that you get to uh, look at or collect or show off to your friends or uh, just display in your house. There is a tangible asset um, that you get to enjoy that you don't get to do with the, you know, with the, the crypto investing or, you know, with uh, the, the stock market and that kind of thing. So a 64% increase is pretty good. Now, 
This is the reality that not everybody always brings up when they're talking about investing in Magic the Gathering. When you take a look at the percentage of fees that you had to pay, about 9% on TCG Player, and you calculate out if you ship that box, you're gonna pay about nine to $10 in shipping. Those average you know, rate of return comes down to about a 38% increase in, in wealth or increase in profit um, in the uh, Magic the Gathering Seal product sense 2018. And that's not great compared to, you know, stock markets and other things. So at the end of the day, this question of should you be investing in sealed product, it, it really is an answer of basically no. It, it is not worth it as much as it is worth to invest in the stock market and other things like that. Again, not financial advice, just showing you the data from when I started investing five years ago. And kind of the conversation point always ends up being you got to hold this product for at least five years. And this is where we get into what happens next. Because what we've seen over the last five, five years is really interesting. We saw uh, draft boxes of standard sets see uh, relatively good increases. We saw master sets really do nothing or go negative. Masters 25th is actually negative, especially if you calculate the fees and shipping. Um, and then we saw supplemental sets really increase over time. So if you pick and choose the right sets, you can actually do phenomenally well uh, with collecting sealed product but you also have to keep in mind uh, that battle bond and dominaria were two sets in 2018 that didn't see a hefty reprint and now in 2023 we just don't really see that level of um of of short printing happening in the magic community and magic involvement and maybe we'll get burned maybe in 2023 they will do a product um kind of like i mean step in complete bundles might be this product honestly uh where they short print and it, it sees increased growth kind of like a battle bond scenario or a dominaria scenario uh, but we haven't seen that yet so at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to should you invest in Magic the Gathering product, I think you have to ask this, this really important question. Do I get additional value out of it as a collectible asset? And this is where I, I really hammer in. I really land on the, in the question, should you invest in Magic the Gathering? My, my answer honestly is no, you shouldn't. My answer is that you should collect magic the gathering and this is a, a paradigm shift for me um because i really did start out as it started out as a really an investment i wasn't even playing the game at the time uh now obviously like i, I play the game a lot more you know i play commander probably three times a week at the shop i play popper every week like i'm really invested not only in uh the financial side of magic the gathering but i'm invested in the gameplay side and, it, and it's a hobby for me as much as it's a business too um, but the answer to that question of should you invest in Magic the Gathering, in my opinion, is no. You should not invest in Magic the Gathering, but yes, you should collect the things that you love. Because if you can collect something that you enjoy now, and you can see a 30 to 40% increase in that product over five years, uh, and it brings you the joy of having it on the shelf or being able uh, to, uh, you know, willy nilly just kind of decide to crack it open with your friends and enjoy an hour long experience of opening up packs from a set from four or five years ago that you and your friends really enjoyed. If it produces some sort of additional value in your life outside of the investment side, I think that this is a really, really, really strong collectible asset still, even in 2023 with the collector boxes and set boxes and draft boxes and epilogue boxes and a foil in every pack and different, even with the differences of product now in 2023 compared to 2018. If collecting it gives you joy, there is an element of financial value in this uh, that allows you to take some uh, some mitigated risk and uh, and collect something that, that produces joy in your life as well as a, a financial return at the end of the day. So if you have the means and if you are already uh, you know investing in your in retirement and your Roth IRAs and all the other financial advice stuff that somebody else can give you, your fun money, your collectible money, 
money, your, your hobby money, instead of blowing that all, I do think there is a fun element to collecting Magic the Gathering still, which in, you know, with the five years of data we have, it's 2023, that's from 2018. With the five years of data that we have, uh, it does produce a 40 to 60% return on investment for collecting, which is a huge win. There's not a whole lot of other hobbies that you can do that are going to provide to you a return on investment, not just a, a money suck, but actually a return on investment. Uh, and if, if collecting Magic the Gathering can give you a return on investment, I still believe it is a really good um, opportunity for a hobby. So uh, is it worth it to collect, to invest in Magic the Gathering? My, my answer honestly is no, but is it worth it to collect Magic the Gathering? I think the answer is yes. And I, I think it'll be really interesting to revisit this conversation in 2028 when it's been 10 years and I still won't have sold that Dominaria box or I still won't have sold that Battle Bond box. We can look at a 10 year window of investing in Magic the Gathering compared to a five year window of collecting Magic the Gathering. If I, if I switch my, my mindset and I, I go to collecting now and it's instead of a case, I just collect one box. It'll be really interesting to see where things are in five years from now and in 10 years from 2018. So anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Are you still investing in Magic the Gathering or have you cut ties with sealed product as a result of them doing set boxes and draft boxes and collector boxes and a million foils and reprinting everything or uh, I, you know, have you cut ties or are you still all in? Are you still actively buying product like you did five years ago? I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Have yourself a great day. Be kind to the people around you and we'll see you again next video.